Good day, dear students. We are now going to cover determiners and quantifiers. And today our lesson is the part two of the same topic. In our previous lessons, we introduced what determiners and quantifiers are. Determiners determine whether the noun is specific or is it general. And quantifiers determine or quantifiers help us identify the number, the quantity of the noun, whether it is a person or something. Our next thing that we covered was specific and general determiners. And then we finally covered the indefinite article, a uh, and an, its usage. Remember that a uh is used with consonant sounds and an is used with consonant, oh uh, sorry, vowel sounds. Today, in today's lesson, we will be covering the definite article, the, interrogative determiners and quantifiers. The, determin the definite article, the. The definite article, the, is the most frequent word used in English. We use the definite article in front of a noun when we believe the listener or the reader knows exactly what we are referring to. First point in this is because there is only one. We already know that something is just one all over the world or in our surroundings. We will use the before it. The Pope is visiting Russia. The moon is very bright tonight. Who is the president of France? Remember, there is just one Pope all over the world. There is just one moon around the earth. And there is just one president of France, not two, not any more. This is why we use the definite article with a superlative adjective. Remember, adjective defines the quality of a noun. And adjective is of, adjective has three degrees of comparison. You have the simple adjective, then you compare two things and it's called comparative. And when there are more than two things to be compared, we call it superlative. For example, he is the tallest boy in the class. That is, there are more than two boys in the class. And the one we are talking about, he is the tallest. It is the oldest building in the town. There are many old buildings in the town, but the one we are specifically talking about is the one which is the oldest. Because there is only one in that context. We live in a small house next to the church, the church in our village. Dad, can I borrow the car, the car that belongs to our family? When we stayed at my grandmother's house, we went to the beach every day. Which beach are we talking about? The one which is near my grandmother's house. Look at the boy over there. Not just any boy, but the one that I am pointing at because we have already mentioned it in our text. A young man got a nasty shock when he tr tried to rob a jewelry shop in Richmond. A young man got a nasty shock when he tried to rob a jewelry shop in Richmond. The man, was the man used a heavy hammer to smash the windows in the shop. Which man? The one we have already spoken about. And which shop are we talking about? the jewelry shop, which has already been mentioned previously. We also use the definite article to say something about all the things referred to by a noun. The wolf is not really a dangerous animal. Here, we're talking about all the wolves, that all the wolves are not really dangerous animals. The kangaroo is found only in Australia. That is, all the kangaroos are found only in Australia until unless they've been gifted to another country and to be kept in the zoo. The heart pumps blood around the body. The job of the heart is all sorts of hearts in every human being, in every living creature. The task of the hearts is to pump blood around bodies. We use definite article in this way to talk about musical instruments. Joey plays the piano really well. She's learning the guitar. 
to refer to a system or service. How long does it take on the train? I heard it on the radio. You should tell the police. The train, the radio are systems. Police provides you with the services. Also, police, the police um, and its services are also a system. Below are three exercises given on the definite article. I will send you a link and you can easily attempt these. We can also use the indefinite article with adjectives like poor, rich, elderly, and unemployed to talk about groups of people. Life can be very hard for the poor, just like we talked about the wolves, the kangaroos. Similarly, we are talking about all the poor people over here. I think the rich should pay more taxes. She worked for a group to help the disabled, all sorts of disabled. The definite article with names. We do not normally use the definite article with names. William Shakespeare wrote Hamlet. Paris is the capital of France. Iran is in Asia. We do not say the Iran is in the Asia. The Paris is the capital of the France. No, we do not use definite articles with names. We do use the definite article with countries whose names include words like kingdom, states, or republic. The United Kingdom, the Kingdom of Bhutan, the United States, the People's Republic of China. Countries which have plural nouns as their names, the Netherlands, the Philippines. Geographical features such as mountain ranges, groups of islands, rivers, seas, oceans, and canals. The Himalayas, the Canaries, the Atlantic, the Amazon, the Panama Canal. Newspapers, the Times, the Washington Post well-known buildings or works of art, the Empire State Building, the Taj Mahal, the Mona Lisa. Organizations, the United Nations, the Siemens Union, hotels, pubs, and restaurants, the Ritz, the Ritz Hotel, the King's Head, the Deja Vu. But note that we do not use the definite article if the name of the hotel or restaurant is the name of the owner. Browns, Browns Hotel, Morels, Morales Hotel, families, the Obamas, the Jacksons. Again, I'll give you an access to these exercises in your um, Google Classroom. Introgative determiners, which and what? The introgative determiners are two in number, number one, which, and number two, what. Which is specific determiner. That is, it talks about specific things just like the determiner, the definite article, the. Here are three books. Which book do you think is the most interesting? They have four boys. Which boy is the oldest? I can't remember which house Janet lives in. Which restaurant did you go to? On the other hand, what is a general determiner? What food do you like? I don't know what job she does. As an exercise, I'd like you to attempt once I give you the link to it. Finally, we come to quantifiers. First and foremost, quantifiers are used to give information about the number of something. How much? or how many. Sometimes we use quantifier in place of a determiner. Most children start school at the age of five. We ate some bread and butter. We saw lots of birds. Quantifiers with count and uncount nouns. We use these quantifiers with both count and uncount. Remember, 10 of these can be used with both the countable and uncountable nouns. Countable nouns are ones which we can count. Uncountable ones are the ones that we cannot count. We have lots of time. Joey has lots of friends. Time cannot be counted. Friends can be counted. I can't go out. I've got no money. Money cannot be counted. There was a lot of food, but no drinks. Drinks can be counted. 
These more colloquial forms, colloquial means slang, these more colloquial forms are also used with both countable and uncountable nouns. Plenty of, heaps of, a load of, loads of, tons of. We have loads of time. Joey has plenty of friends. There was heaps of food. Some and any. We do not normally use the quantifier some in negative and interrogative sentences. We normally use any. Do you have any children? Did you see any friends? We don't have any children. I didn't see any friends. Remember the first two quest statements are questions, that is interrogatives. So we have used any. The second two, uh, sentence number three and four are both in the negative, hence we have used any. The third, the final statement, in the final statement, we have the sentence in two formats. The first half of the statement is affirmative, whereas the second clause is negative. Because the first half is affirmative, we are using the, the quantifier sum. Because the second half the second clause is in negative, we are using any. We saw some lions at the zoo, but we didn't see any tigers. But we can use some for offers and requests. Here is an offer. Would you like some tea? Request. I want some apples, please. Here are some exercises to be attempted on the usage of some and any. Quantifiers with count nouns. Some quantifiers can be used only with count nouns. Here is the list of eight quantifiers which can only be used with countable nouns. Not many, each, either, a few, several, both, neither, fewer. These more colloquial forms are used only with count nouns. A couple of, hundreds of, thousands of. I'll be back in a couple of minutes. There were hundreds of people at the meeting. Quantifiers with count nouns. Some quantifiers can be used only with uncountable nouns. Not much, a bit of, a little. Would you like a little wine? Could I have a bit of butter, please? Remember, you can't count wine. You cannot because it's a liquid and you cannot count butter. You can measure it, but you cannot count it. These quantifiers are used particularly with abstract nouns such as time, money, and trouble. A great deal of, a good deal of. It will probably cost a great deal of money. He spent a good deal of time watching television. Attempt the exercises, please. Now, members of groups. We put a noun directly after a quantifier when we're talking about members of a group in general. Few snakes are dangerous. Most children like chocolate. I never have enough money. Here, snakes, children, and money are members of a group in general. But if we're talking about members of a specific group, we use of the as well. Few of the snakes in this zoo are dangerous. We are talking about specific group. The, which snakes? The ones which belong in this zoo, which are habit inhabitant of this zoo. Most of the boys at my school, which boys? The ones who are from specifically my school. Most of the boys at my school play football. He spent all of the money that we gave him. Both of the chairs in my office are broken. Note, with all and both, we do not need to use of. We can say, all the chairs in my office are broken. 
oh, sorry, both the chairs in my office are broken, all the money that we gave him. Both, either, and neither. If you're talking about two people or things, we use the quantifier both, either, and neither. One supermarket, two supermarkets, more than two supermarkets. The supermarket was closed. Both the supermarkets were closed. All the supermarkets were closed. We're talking about two, remember, two. Two people or things. The supermarket wasn't open. Neither of the supermarkets was open. None of the supermarkets were open. I don't think the supermarket was open. I don't think either of the supermarkets was open. I don't think any of the supermarkets were open. Okay? Notice the use of both, neither, and either. Notice the use of the helping verb. Note that nouns with both have a plural verb. Plural verb. But with either and neither, your helping verb was singular. Attempt the exercise. Every and each. We use the quantifiers every and each with singular nouns to mean all. There was a party in every street. That is, there were parties in all the streets. Every shop was decorated with flowers. That is, all the shops were decorated with flowers. Each child was given a prize. All the children were given a prize, we mean. There was a prize in each competition, meaning there were prizes in all the competitions. We often use every to talk about times like days, weeks, and years. When we were children, we had holidays at our grandmother's every year. When we stayed at my grandmother's house, we went to the beach every day. We visit our daughter every Christmas. We do not use a determiner with each and every. Every shop was decorated with flowers, not the every shop. Each child was given a prize, not the each child. With that, we come to the end of our lesson. I hope you have understood all the content very well. For any questions, for any queries, you can always contact me. The links will be given in your Google Classroom. Thank you very much.